Washington, D.C., um, talking a little bit about healing the body, but you can apply everything I say to healing any emotional problem, too. It's all the same. It all starts in the mind. Of course, the mind rules the body, and the Course in Miracles says, therefore, all illness is mental illness. So negative thoughts produce negative results in the body and in your life, of course. It's the subconscious mind that causes our problems. So that's why it's important to do this breathing because the circular smooth breathing brings up the subconscious so that you can see it. That's the miracle. And most people um, never find out what's in their subconscious and they keep suppressing it and that's why they don't get healed. So um, anyway, a sick body doesn't make any sense. And usually if we're sick, we're punishing ourselves rather than have God punish us because we're guilty. Uh, probably all of our problems around guilt uh, affect us a lot. Uh, so the Course says anytime we are sick, we are replacing God with the ego. And the, the part of the body that suffers is where we're holding on to the ego. And it goes as far as to say that we're trying to kill God and that we're in competition with God. So I've had a lot of different illnesses in my life and I've healed them. And I've written about that in Revolutionary Spiritual Healing. So if you don't have that book, it's really powerful. It's got 50 years of my knowledge as a healer in there. So one of the things is we have to give up our competition with God. Actually, any problem we have is a competition with God. Any problem we have in our body is competition with God. And any problem we have in our life <laughs> is uh, our ego, which is in competition with God. So. Um, that's why spiritually you have to um, focus on your spiritual side to be healed permanently. I mean, you might take pills uh, and they might give you temporary relief, but if you don't handle the cause, then the condition could just come back. So there's three steps to spiritual healing. Number one is you find the cause and the cause is always a thought. So any problem you have is due to a thought, negative thought. Then number two is you have to confess it to someone, to a higher power or to someone. And then you do spiritual purification to release the, the thought. So that's what we're doing now by breathing. Uh, so sickness is not an accident. There are no accidents. No one suffers pain or disease except his choice elects this state for him. I'm just quoting Jesus in The Course in Miracles. No one suffers pain or disease except his choice elects the state for him. It's your thoughts alone that cause you pain and cause you problems. Okay, so any problem, you know, we've made it up contrary to God, because if we didn't have uh, a contrary to God, everything would just work. So we always say in breath work, all pain is the effort involved in clinging to a negative thought. And so, we're hanging on to a negative thought with power. Now you wanna get that anything can be healed. All things are possible. It says it right in the Bible. And of course, Jesus says that again, there's nothing my holiness cannot do. My holiness can solve any problem. Chronic pain or other illnesses can also be caused by suppressed anger. Okay, if you suppress your anger, that could make you sick and could wipe out your energy. Stress is obviously one of the main causes of disease. So you have to say, what is the stress that I'm creating that's causing this disease? Um, no one is sick or dies without his consent. Now that's a line in the Course in Miracles. No one is sick or dies without his consent. So of course we look a lot at the unconscious death urge which is all your programming on death, and that causes sickness. For example, people who have cancer, it's a battle between the life urge and the death urge, and the cells are confused. Now, we could heal someone of cancer by making their life urge stronger than their death urge, and they might get healed of the cancer, but if they don't handle their death urge, they'll just make up a new way to kill themselves. So we say all healing is temporary until you heal death. So we can teach you how to heal anything, but if you don't heal your death urge, you'll just not make up another way. 
So the real source of cancer comes from hopelessness and the desire to die. Now, as long as you keep thinking death is inevitable, you'll create some sickness to prove you're right. <laughs> There's a line in The Course of Miracles that's pretty heavy. It says, the cause of all sickness is always the wish to die and overcome Christ. And if you haven't ever had Louise Hayes' book, You Can Heal Your Life, she gives all the metaphysical causes in there. Like, you know, if you have a hear, ear problem, what don't you want to hear? If you have an eye problem, what don't you want to see? If you have a heart problem, it's something in the area of love. And, you know, she gives all the metaphysical causes. Now, sometimes we're just stuck in family loyalty with our problems. There is an unconscious tendency to copy the illness of one's parents and grandparents uh, because you're loyal to them. You don't want to be loyal to your parents' problems, you know? So I always give the affirmation, I disconnect from the family mind. I disconnect from my mother's mind if you're stuck in copying her. I disconnect my father's mind if you're stuck in copying him or maybe the family mind, which is their prejudice, their belief systems, prosperity consciousness. Um, I remember in Spain, I gave people that affirmation. I just connect from my mother's mind and they said, oh, we can't do that. That's disloyal. <laughs> See, then I found out people are so loyal that they'll even copy the negatives. But most people are unconsciously copying the negatives. You might have copied their body types. You might have copied their illnesses. You might have copied their weight problems. It's an unhealthy form of loving. So you want to disconnect from the family mind um, things that didn't work. Many people have actually already unconsciously programmed their own death to match the parent or a grandparent. Be careful what you copy. Now, another thing is we have an addiction to suffering. Suffering is a pattern. Now, if you're very formally religious, you might have been taught suffering is holy. That's a mistake from religion. So we have to forgive the church for teaching us that suffering is normal and is health is holy. Uh, by the way, addiction to suffering is one of the reasons prayers don't work. I mean, I could probably give you the right prayers to heal yourself. I've figured out so many prayers for healing and they're in that book I mentioned. But if a person has addiction to suffering, then they could even cancel out the prayers to work. Fear, anger, and guilt contribute to sickness, obviously. So you have to figure out what is your fear, what is your guilt, what is your anger. Some anger is extremely damaging to your etheric substance and to your organs. It damages your relationships, obviously, too. But it, it definitely damages your body and it shuts out the life force. So you want to give up anger permanently. <laughs> You don't want to suppress it and you don't want to dump it on somebody else. You want to change the thought that causes your anger because anger will close off the flow of life in the body. And the course says you're never upset for the reason you think anyway. You know, usually you're upset about something and it's an earlier similar thing that's getting triggered. Anyway, anytime you express your anger, you're going to feel guilty. So you don't want to dump your anger on somebody else that hurts them. You don't want to suppress it in you. That hurts yourself. So Babaji said you have to change the thought that causes your anger. By the way, anger is victim consciousness. You know, whatever you're angry at, you created that thing anyway. So it, it doesn't behoove you to be angry. Now, guilt will always cause problems in the body and in your life because guilt always demands punishment. So you have to remember that. So a lot of people are guilty about something and they're punishing their bodies by having an illness or a pain because they're guilty about something. So you have to find out what am I guilty about and, and forgive yourself so you can, don't have to punish yourself. Most of us believe we separated from God and we took a body and that's our original guilt. That's called the original sin or the original guilt. And if you believe in the original sin, then that's a request for death. So you want to give up all your belief systems around sin because the belief in sin causes tremendous guilt. <laughs> but to the ego, there's no escape from guilt. 
the uh, final stage you have to go through, and this is in the text of the Course in Miracles, so you may not have heard this, it said, the ego is going to tell you, if you dare think you're innocent, then you're really guilty. So the ego is trying to tell you, you can never give up guilt because it's wrong to be innocent. Believe it or not, that's what the ego is trying to say. Uh, I would say the Course is always talking about the fact that there's only fear or love. There's only two choices. So ultimately, fear is the main cause of sickness. And you don't, you know, people don't like to feel fear. It's too scary. I hate to feel fear. I feel weak. So what happens is people are suppressing the fear and that's causing the symptoms or the problems in their life. Suppressing the fear. So um, a new thing I just learned from healing this last year is I no longer believe in this condition. I'm no longer subject to this condition. I'm beyond this condition. That's a prayer that has really helped me uh, lately. Is I don't give the condition so much power. <laughs> because at times I've had conditions and I've been wrestling with them and wrestling with them and it just makes it worse. So not to give it power is really important. Not to make it real. I no longer believe in this condition. I'm no longer subject to this condition. I'm beyond it. That is the, the prayer I've been doing lately with very effective. Also, past lives have to do with sickness. There's a really good book by Dr. Roger Wolger called Other Lives, Other Selves. And he talks about how people have uh, past life things and that's affecting their body now. It's a very good book. On the first chapter, he said he didn't even believe in past lives till he had a rebirthing session. <laughs> And in his first rebirthing session, he saw, you know, visions of other lifetimes and he, he realized he was having a past life memory. So then he began to study how the type of birth you had is related to your past lives. Like if you had the cord around the neck, you might have been hung in the past life. You know, if you had too much anesthesia, you might have been gassed in the gas chambers. And <laughs> it's a very, very interesting book. I think the most important thing is to understand that the unconscious death urge is what causes your sickness. And the unconscious death urge has to do with the following, the thought I'm separate from God, the belief that death is inevitable, and your personal lie, which is your worst thought about yourself. Those three things alone can kill you. But all your programming from religion, your family patterns on disease, that's part of your death urge addictions, bad habits, all anti-life thoughts, false religious theology, past life memories of dying, or your secret wish to die because you hate your life. Some people have the thought, I don't want to be here. With that thought, nothing is going to work, of course. Now, of course, when a family member dies, your unconscious death urge gets activated. So you need more breath work, especially if it's your parents or siblings or even a pet or your partner, and anybody that's really close to you dies, that's gonna activate your own death urge. Okay, so I think you need to get that all death is suicide. If I haven't gotten that across to you, people kill themselves with their own thoughts. The body dies when it can, when it can no longer clear itself. Well, some people say, oh yeah, I wanna be healed, but they have a fear of healing. People want a miracle, but most people are afraid of miracles because they don't have the reality. It's too unusual. So the Course is you have to pray for release of the fear of the miracle. Anything you, any big problem you're having right now, you probably want a miracle. Well, first of all, you have to pray for release of the fear of the miracle, and then you have to have faith. Faith precedes miracles. So if you want a miracle, you need to increase your faith. So today, let's all increase our faith to solve the problem that you expressed. My goal for you is that you get the answer to whatever your problem is right now while you're breathing. <laughs> so the Course says, do not ask the Holy Spirit to heal the body. But you have to ask for the healing of the mind. So healing must occur in the place where it's needed, which is in the mind. 
That's why, you know, I quit medicine when I was a nurse 14 years. I never saw people getting permanently healed. We would take, give them perfect nursing care. They'd go home. Six months later, they'd come back with the same condition. <laughs> it's because they never got to the cause, which is always in the mind. The Course says you'll give up your pain, you'll give up your problems when you see no more value. You want to remember anything can be cured. Nothing is too hard for the Holy Spirit. Nothing is too hard for the Holy Spirit. Remember that. So the real physician or the doctor is the mind of the patient himself. So you are your own doctor and you can create the illness and you can uncreate it. See, if you created it, you can also uncreate it. If you created the problem you expressed, you can also uncreate it. So you don't want to have the thought, there's no solution to my problem. All things are possible. And it helps to have gratitude. If you want to be healed of anything, keeping a gratitude journal is very helpful. Of course, all healing involves replacing fear with love. And all healing is a result of some kind of forgiveness. Often if you're sick or you have a problem, there's something you haven't forgiven. Healing with the Holy Spirit always works. If you don't work with the Holy Spirit, the results will vary. I mean, sometimes you might be lucky and get healed and other times you won't. But if you work with the Holy Spirit, that is the gift that God has given us is the help of the Holy Spirit. Remember, anything you've created, you can uncreate. There is no miracle that you cannot have. Miracles are ordinary, it says in the Course. If they don't happen, something's gone wrong. For healing to happen, the cells must receive and retain more light. And that's why we need to breathe. And we're inhaling light. So imagine on the inhale, you're taking in light and you're pushing out whatever the problem is. A lot of people say, well, I won't be happy till I'm healthy, but it's the other way around. You'll be healthy when you're happy. <laughs> infinite love and gratitude transforms your molecules. So the more you're in infinite love and gratitude, the more you're going to be healed. Everything you express is, is an opportunity. Like your illness is actually an opportunity for you to grow and to change. All right, so I'm gonna close with this statement. To give a problem over to the Holy Spirit to solve for you means that you want it solved. To keep it for yourself to solve without his help is to decide it should remain unsolved. The Holy Spirit's problem solving is the way the problem ends. I'm gonna say that one more time. To give a problem over to the Holy Spirit to solve for you means that you want it solved. So right now, give your problem that you expressed over to the Holy Spirit while you breathe. I give you, Holy Spirit, this problem that I have today. I'm not going to keep it for myself to solve. I'm going to ex accept your help. I'm going to allow you to help me, Holy Spirit. I'm going to allow you to heal me of this problem. I'm going to allow the healing to happen. Now, if you've said your prayer, and you don't get healed of this problem, why? It means you're not receiving. If you ask the Holy Spirit to solve your problem and you mean that sincerely, and you turn it over to him and it doesn't happen, that means you're not allowing the answer to be received. There's a problem with you receiving and you probably need a private session in that case. Okay, Boli Baba Kije. We taught the happiness and longevity training twice, no, actually three times on the European tour. And one of the things that became very clear to us is how much happiness is a healing factor. And like Sandra said, often our, our ego thought system says, well, I'll be happy when I feel better but it's the other way around. I'll feel better when I decide to be happy. So, you know, the Course in Miracles says, heaven is the decision I must make. You could also say, happiness is the decision I must make. It's, it's a decision you make to be happy. 
you decide to feel good, you decide to focus on the positive aspects of your life, not all the negative things. And when you make that decision to feel good and to be happy, then you get well. And if you have a symptom in your body, the symptom clears up. So happiness is the most um, healing factor in, in clearing up any condition. So we have to decide to be happy.